I'm just going to give it two more minutes, Body. Thank you very much for participating and joining us in our first introductory webinar between EOS Hub and Open Air Advance. Thanks to our speakers as well. Um, I'm going to hand over to my counterpart, Gergli, um, in a minute, in a minute uh, at EOS Hub. But just some housekeeping, please can you all mute if you're not presenting? I'm sure you know that already, but just please press the mute button. If there are any problems, just write in the chat. We'll be monitoring that. Gergli's will, Gergli will make the speakers presenters and they'll share their screens. Um, as we have a tight schedule, I think there'll be time for about one question in between each of the presentations and then there'll be time for discussion at the end either via chat, uh, but you can also speak. It's quite easy. You can just unmute and, and speak. Um, and also, as Gagli mentioned, this webinar will be recorded and uh, you'll be able to revisit it. And the slides will also be made available online uh, in our respective portals. OK, so um, I waste no more time. I'll uh, hand it over to Gagli now, who will introduce the purpose of the webinar and also um, EOS Cub and the NGI network. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Gerge Shipos and I work uh, in the EOS Cub project and uh, working for the EGI Foundation, which is the coordinating institute of this project. And in the next few minutes, I would like to give an introduction of the purpose of this webinar and uh, what motivated us to call for this meeting. The whole started with the European Open Science Cloud, which I'm sure all of you heard about. That's a recently started European Commission uh, initiated uh, initiative that spans across multiple projects. There are a number of projects that already started and already active, and there are open calls or recently closed uh, calls for future projects that will also uh, work on building this open, European Open Science Cloud. And the idea here is to integrate existing capabilities from generic as well as from discipline or scientific discipline specific areas into a single system that could be uh, could facilitate open science uh, in Europe and uh, across the globe. There are different aspects of this which you can see on the slide. I'm not going into the detail. Rather talk a bit about the EOS Hub and Open Air Advanced Project, which are two initiatives that are partner initiatives in the recently started e-infra 12 project area. They have to work together very closely because they provide complementary services and work on complementary topics. Roughly speaking, the EOS Hub project is about integrating and federating storage, compute, and application services, and moving these into the future EOSC, Open, European Open Science Cloud, and Open Air does the same around research data management, publication services, and the related support and, and consultancy. So the two things very much complement each other. So the idea which came from the project and as well as backed up by the European Commission is that these two projects must work very closely together, which is not only in words, but also described in a joint formal work plan, which spans across three topics, dissemination and community building. This is what me and Naila are responsible for from the two projects. There is technical integration activities and there are governance related discussions and, and strategy development activities. What, how the two projects are fitting together and their vision fits together is represented on this slide, which we jointly uh, prepared through the preparation of this joint collaboration uh, work plan. This slide basically goes through the research life cycle. Probably some of you have seen this originally, the original version of this slide came from the colleagues from Open Air. Basically, now we are just stepping through the different stages of the research life cycle. We start with developing a research idea, formalizing data management plan, finding reusable data sets or producing new data, uh, preparing the data for analysis, then creating a workflow, performing some analytics on the data, massaging the results, selecting the best one, and publishing the end result, which can or hopefully will in the very short future in different communities be encapsulated into research objects, which encapsulate the whole um, input data, the result data, uh, the workflow that was used to transform the input to output, some provenance information of what happened during the analysis and the scientific publication. And the idea here is that 
the two projects, the services that and the consultancy services that the two projects offer nicely cover the whole research life cycle with joint activities focusing on the first part. So open our advance is very strong in the data management planning and research data management aspect. Yosk Hub uh, also provides services around that. So we definitely need to work very strongly together. Then for the big data analytics and the big data handling, annotations, cleaning, curation, workflows, this is the area where EOSC Hub is really focusing on. And then the publication of research objects and the reporting on the research impact is again an area for open air advance. So this is the big vision that motivates us. And that vision is broken or represented by different activities in the joint project work plan. And again, you can see these three activity streams, dissemination and community building, technical integration and governance. And today we are focusing on the dissemination and community building area, and especially on the area of bringing together the NGIs, which are the national members of the EOSCAR project, and the NOAAs, who are the national members of the Open Air Advance project. And hopefully, based on this bringing together the communities, we can then strengthen the collaboration inside the member states and then jointly support uh, scientific communities in order to facilitate the implementation of this research lifecycle that was on the previous slide. What we want to do today is, first of all, get to know each other, both the projects, but also the national entities through a few examples. And I'm glad to inform you that the RDA colleagues also joined this webinar, uh, which is a another initiative that is building a national uh, map of activities. They will present themselves. So hopefully we can, by the end of today, have an idea of who are active in the different member states from the NGI, from the NOAAs, and from RDA, and we can trigger local actions in order to strengthen the national networks. I will continue now with an introduction of the EOSCO project. Then Nyla will go on with the Open Air Advance. Then we will have flash talks from, from NOAAs and NGIs just to give you a flavor of what it means practically to be an NGI or to be a NOAD. Then we will get an introduction of the RDA national nodes concept. And uh, hopefully we will have some further questions and discussion at the end in order to reach some agreement on next steps and practicalities. So let me uh, switch to the introduction of EOSC Hub and the NGIs, which in a few minutes will give you an overview of this project, of this project and its national members. I will start with introducing the project through the usual fact sheet and through the objectives. Then I will go on into the national focus points, the EGI, NGIs, and NGI international liaisons. I will explain what those concepts mean. Those are key enablers and partners in the project. We will describe what we together do in order to make EOSC happen. And I will close this presentation with information on how we see the situation with respect to the NOAAs, how we can work together and what we can do for them and with them. So the EOSC Hub project, similar to Open Air Advanced, is a Horizon 2020 project that started on the 1st of January. It lasts for three years. It's a very massive initiative with more than 100 partners, 33 million euro budget. Uh, already so far, more than 200 people are working in the project. Uh, we expect this number to grow even further. And the initiative lasts for three years. The mission of EOSC Hub is to integrate providers from 20 different existing digital infrastructures and to federate those into a jointly uh, offering, which we call the hub, which will offer computing, storage, application, consultancy, and training services for researchers and innovations in Europe and worldwide. EGI, which is the federation I am working for, is one of the initiators of this project. And together, EGI with the UDET infrastructure and with the Indigo Data Cloud project initiated this large initiative, but involved 17 other big networks. I would like to focus on EGI aspect, which you can consider as a subset of the providers or partners in this big initiative. But this subset is organized around a national arrangement. 
EGI itself was established in 2010 as a follow-up of the Large Hadron Collider grid computing infrastructure that was built from CERN and then became a more general system. Once it became a more general system, the, the member states decided to establish a coordination office in Amsterdam, which is called the EGI Foundation. I'm working for them. And to integrate the computing infrastructure around national infrastructures, so-called NGIs. So the NGIs you can see here on the map cover a large part of Europe. Each NGI is, has its own national legal structure a representation in EGI and offering of services through the EGI Federation to international and to national user communities. EGI has a financial uh, aspect to it. The NGIs pay a membership fee on an annual basis to, to, to the EGI Foundation, which is used to keep the Federation together by offering central services such as information catalog, uh, accounting, monitoring systems, but also we run innovation projects through Horizon 2020 or from other initiatives that help this federation develop new services, add new services and capabilities, or work with very specific researchers. Um, the NGIs are the key, key stakeholders of EGI. And each NGI is different because it emerged from the national landscape. It considers the legal entities that exist in that national landscape to support uh, researchers and research communities. It considers the legal aspects uh, and the integration of national services into the European landscape. But every NGI is similar to a large extent. Namely, they operate online services, which were traditionally grid computing services. Recently, most NGIs also operate cloud computing services, operate storage services, operate high-level applications, portal interfaces, virtual research environments. So basically, those things that researchers in the digital era require in order to produce, store, manage, process, and share data. NGIs offer user consultancy and training to facilitate the uptake of these services. They organize events, workshops, conferences, national events, or they dip into international conferences. They support scientists with integrating scientific applications with the distributed computing and storage systems. And sometimes they also have effort for the software development itself. The NGIs are linked into EGI and then into EOSC through three different ways. There are the council representatives, which is the political board. There are the NGI international liaisons, which are in the focus of today's webinar, who connect the so-called consultancy services, such as training, the events, the user engagement and support. And there are the operation managers who operate the IT systems and they link these operational aspects into the European landscape. The slides are shared and you can study them. I included the three mo most important links. One is about the links of NGIs. I had a snapshot on the previous slide. The second is the list of the NGI international liaisons with the email contacts. You can see whether an NGI has a contact in your country and if, it, if, if the country has an NGI, then who is or who are those people, you can contact them. And some example use cases to give you a bit of uh, details about what kind of applications we actually and scientific use cases we actually support with these online services. And here the message is that these NGI services are integrated into EGI and through EGI into the EOSC Hub initiative, where you can see that one aspect of EOSC Hub are the operation of online data sets or data as a service, online applications, online tools, baseline computing capacity training and consultancy. EOSCOP has other aspects as well, such as marketplace, authentication systems, security regulations, IT service certification, and so on and so forth. But the take home message is that NGIs contribute to the EOSCOP through EGI. And let me finish this overview with one slide that, uh, that are the ideas of how we can help the NOAA, so how the NGIs can help the NOAA. Basically, we are experts or network of experts of big data and big compute topics where uh, you can ask questions from these people about 
where can I analyze scientific data? If I if my experiment produces big data, where should I uh, get computing power, computing capacity for the duration of the analysis? How should I transfer big data from my institute to, to those computing and storage facilities? Uh, what kind of application portals or gateways already exist that I may be able to reuse to run an analysis? How can I create new environments for my discipline or for my project? Uh, what's the difference between cloud computing or containers or grid computing or supercomputers? Um, and what tools can I use for, for, for managing data or implementing a research data management plan? And this last, uh, last question is very important to jointly work together with the NOAAs, who are also experts on this area and where the two groups should uh, jointly support research communities. What we expect is that uh, after this webinar and later this year and in the uh, next years, the NOAAs and NIAs start organizing workshops together in the national context uh, and use the expertise of both groups to, to best support the research communities um, and to jointly offer such services such as training or, or, or the national consultancy service. And of course, um, the, the NIAs can be the kind of gateways for you or the supporters for you to, to join additional services into, into EOSC or to federate them into EGI. So thank you. Those were the introductory slides. Do we have time for a question, Naila? Um, does anyone have, we have time for one question, I said, after each presentation. So does anyone have any questions on Gagli's presentation? Again, you can write in the chat and we urge you to introduce yourselves, if you like, in the chat to your national counterpart um, as a takeaway from this webinar. Okay. Have you shared? Would you like to take over now, Gagli, if you share? Yes, there? I may be present. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, Gagli. I um, hope you can see my screen, everyone. So, uh, just... Yeah, so um, just to carry on from Gagli to introduce Open Air Advance, we started as well at the same time as EOS Cub in 2018 in January. Um, we're a smaller, smaller project in terms of partners and budget, um, and our focus is different, as I will, I will explain. Open Air is, is a continuation project since 2009. We've been continuing, and um, we're now in our fourth phase. Um, in a nutshell, what we do, we're an infrastructure, uh, so and the technical, much of our focus is um, implementing and aligning open science policies across Europe and also across the world. So we started as an open access infrastructure and we're moving now to an open science infrastructure. So these are aligning the policies of the European Commission to those of the member states. Um, technically, we're also harvesting a lot of open access um, publications and other research output put and linking them to contextual information. So that could be funding information, research project information and researcher information. We then build a set of services, a suite of services on these um, in order for researchers and research groups to embed them into their day to day um, activities. And at the same time, we're promoting a set of interoperable standards to link research all across the world. And we, set, uh, we carry out a set of training and support efforts for open science and for a fairer, better science environment. So in short, we're, we're opening and sharing research and linking it, um, linking its outputs um, so everyone can reuse scientific um, endeavors. Okay. Um, uh, this is an overview of our soon to be launched services, which are already in the pipeline for different stakeholders. So for researchers, for repositories, for community groups, for, for national funders, for innovators, for research managers. So we're building on top of our um, um, information base or these services on top of open air. 
And um, in in terms of what we do, we're, we're in terms of our, our how we sit in EOSC, we're putting the open into it. So we're working, as I said, to harmonize uh, national open science policies at member state level, um, harmonizing them with the European Commission's open access and open science policies. And that we do through training and support materials and all the outreach at the national levels. We also work to establish infrastructures that are interoperable. Um, we're setting up, we've set up an open access infrastructure, and this is interoperable with other infrastructures at national levels, such as repositories. Um, and uh, our main focus has been open access to publications. So here, um, the NOAD's work, as I will explain, is to support this at international level and provide tools um, and information on, on licenses and compliance with repositories in order to be compliant with, with the mandates uh, of the EC and at national level. And last but not least, we also work in the open research data field. So that's supporting fair data and open data and supporting with tools and training um, where, where needed. So those are the open elements that we put into, into EOSC. And today I'm very happy to have a lot of NOADs participating um, in open um, in, in this webinar, the NOADs of Open Air, National Open Access Desks, um, and we have every European country plus others represented. Uh, so if you see your country, if you're from, uh, if you're an NGI, you see your country here, um, you might want to get in touch with your counterpart in, in Open Air. Um, and we're managed in, in a regional approach and uh, we have regional coordinators who manage each of the different regions. So. These are all experts on, on open science, so to speak, and open access, mainly based in institutions across Europe. And they do the work on the ground to support open air and to support open access mandates of the European Commission. Um, and as we've said, um, I mean, it's uh, research is a global endeavor, but every country may approach this differently. That's why we have this national approach within each country. Um, and the landscape is, is very heterogeneous. It's not a homogenous one. Um, there are many different kinds of infrastructures implemented across the landscape. So that's why we work um, at this local level. Um, and we're making this interoperable with, with how Europe uh, 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 puts its mandate across um, in the terms of open access across Europe. So we have 34 countries um, within our network and manage through the four regional coordinators. Um, we're moving gradually towards open science and many of the NOADs uh, in this webinar are already um, involved in open science working groups and task forces. And we're also happy to say that we're linking across uh, around the world towards other global infrastructures. Um, and what they do on the ground, the NOADs, they work in many different areas. They're out, they're reaching out to project coordinators, um, those who receive funding from the European Commission to make sure they're aware of the mandate, to researchers to help them implement um, open access policies, um, to national funders to gather their information into open air, and to administrators um, to, to support, the, uh, to provide information about the tools we open air provides to administrators to support them. They also work to promote open science and open access and to promote the open air services in their daily outreach. And they're working to align infrastructures and repositories um, at a technical level and also policies as well, as I've said, with the EC. And they do this through a number of different national workshops and training or uh, training opportunities. And they're really acting as facilitators uh, for open science and open access at a national level. So if you need information about open access, the NOAD is the person to go to at a national level. And we facilitate many different national workshops, which are still continuing. And this is what we want to flag up today, is that um, open air NOADs are funded to hold at least one national workshop in the next three years. And we encourage you to get involved um, and work together to, uh, for, to, uh, to present or to be aware of these national workshops and at least to attend them from EOSC Hub. So the, the themes are fairly common, but they may change in the next few years, but they mainly deal with open science and implementing mandates and the different challenges and also the European Commission's policies. And they're also um, engaging researchers in these national workshops and supporting open science where possible, possible among research communities. 
So that's really what I want to say in terms of introducing open air. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions at the moment or would like to write something in the chat. Um, the nods are here. Um, if at uh, national level, if anyone wants to write in the chat to introduce each other, you're more than welcome. Um, and we can provide you information about how to get in touch with your national counterpart after or during this webinar. Um, does anyone have any questions now? myself or Gurgly on the Oscarbo Open Air Advance. I have a question. Yes. <clears throat> Naturally, here's Paolo speaking. Um, oh. My question is, uh, you are talking about fair science and I would like to know how are you cooperating or uh, do you want to cooperate with the GoFair initiative, the international <laughs> one? Well, that's, yeah, I mean, we, we have, uh, GoFair, as far as I'm aware, is, is growing in um, a number of different countries, four different countries or three different countries in Europe, and we're very happy to cooperate on, on a training level um, and reach out to them. I mean, we have NOADS as well, who are also part of both Open Air and GoFair. So these are early days, um, and I think the national workshops might be a good um, moment to bring together the two different players um, and there's also go train and I think we also could um, work together on training practices and support does that answer Paolo is that something um, are you involved in any go fair activities yourself in Austria yes uh, but it's a, a, a satisfying answer yeah we are very well involved and uh, deeply involved because uh, of mm. the Austrian presidency activities so we are going to um, support the launch of the EOSC during the next uh, November and of mm -hmm. course uh, the Google initiatives we are uh, thinking on how to establish some services here in Austria through the mm -hmm. news, uh, using okay. uh, go fair principles Let's just to make an example uh, at our library there is um, an office uh, which is uh, will be dedicated to the go fair initiative okay good to know let's be in touch about it okay thanks okay so I think in the interest of time, we have to move on. Um, and uh, actually, this is a good chance to introduce our Austrian colleague, Olivia, who's mm -hmm. yeah. going to mm -hmm. talk to you. Hello, quickly. everybody. Hi. So I'm just waiting for sharing my screen. We can see it now, Olivia. Ah, it's okay, perfect. Fine. It's there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, good afternoon to everybody. Um, I'd like to short, uh, give you a short overview or insight on uh, the NOAA activities in Austria. Um, my colleague and me, uh, my colleague Gerda McNeil and me are working at the Vienna University Library and uh, are the NOAA Austria. Um, whoops. So. And what we call like daily business, I want to mention that we work as a national open science help desk for project coordinators, for the researchers, for funders um, and research administrators. And that we um, disseminate uh, materials, information and uh, uh, get involved in training, like um, we're preparing a workshop for the open access days um, in, in Austria in um, September, September, yes, um, with the NOAAs of Germany and Switzerland. And um, also what is daily business, yeah, building capacity in open science, in RDM and networking. Um, regarding RDM, we are in the lucky position that we have uh, several experts at Vienna University Library, like Paolo, who was speaking before, Paolo Budroni and also Barbara Sanchez-Solis. Uh, she's also in the webinar and that there um, have been built a lot of expertise in policies, in consulting worldwide, um, preparing toolkits. Um, they're also founding members of RDA Austria, um, preparing a um, did prepare a data management plan and um, offer training both for staff and, and researchers, but also for PhD students. Two projects I want to mention, um, which have been like paving the common ground um, for RDM, like Learn and Infrastructure Austria Plus. I guess you're aware of these two projects. Um, they're quite important for paving the way to an um, RDM policies uh, implementing on a national level. And as a, as a result, uh, 
We have uh, already the RDM policy in place at two universities in Vienna and nine are um, about to come. And also University of Vienna um, is in development. Uh, at like at the Vienna University Library, you can see uh, already that we have a broad uh, uh, biotope um, of open initiatives. And as NOATS, we also engage in the open access forum uh, in the task group on licensing, licensing um, working together with the Chris team at the Vienna University. And also, of course, with the repository FEDRA and the uh, Scholar, the open access institutional repository. On a national level, um, we work together with the Open Access Network Austria, um, which includes um, research uh, institutions, universities, uh, funders, and also um, the uh, governmental um, 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 persons. And we're working together with the RepmanNet, uh, the repository manager network, which is really helpful to get insights on the daily business of repository manager regarding the compliancy um, for the open air portal. And we're also um, part of a working group in the Austrian transition to open access uh, three year project um, in Austria regarding uh, monitoring and, and et cetera. Yeah, that was it, um, a small overview and happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Olivia, that was an excellent overview. Does anyone have any questions for Olivia? The Austria, do we have anyone else from Austria? <laughs> any from the EOSCOP side listening? Yes, we would like mm -hmm. to add uh, something, J just an addition, that at the library we also founded uh, Research Data Alliance Austria which is based at our library and then at the Technical University, covering uh, the whole country. And then uh, we are working in a group which is called uh, Austrian Open Science Support Group in order to, um, in, to try to implement and help to implement the EOSC uh, at the universitarian level. Thanks. Thank you. So there's a question about the Austrian NIL is uh, from Genevieve. I don't know if... The Austrian gaggly if you see an, an, a nil from Austria here, but in the audience of the webinar. No, we don't have officially nil in Austria. We, we don't even have okay. the NGI officially. We used to have one, but not anymore. Uh, I can give you uh, an, uh, an answer. So the AGI um, had the uh, two institutions uh, that were participating uh, to the EGI that were based at the um, Academy of Science in Vienna and then in Innsbruck. Um, the, um, in both cases, uh, people went retired and there was a shift in the personnel. And uh, afterwards, there was also some shifts in budget. At the moment, uh, there is no institution participating but I know that from the technical university, there is a, a new group which is try, are trying to form a consortium in order to participate to EGI. I think uh, this will happen maybe in uh, two or three months um, that they will uh, propose uh, um, for a they will apply for a, for a participation. Thank you. Um, perhaps this is Tiziana speaking, so thanks for this uh, remark. We are aware of this initiative and we're looking forward uh, to see an infrastructure group uh, developing. Uh, what are the synergies in Austria that uh, you foresee uh, with uh, what has been presented by the NOAD and other infrastructure activities? Is there already a collaboration, um, some form of national coordination? Paolo, are you able to answer that, or Olivia? I can give you some. Um, um, through the Austrian Open Science Support Group, uh, we are working very close with the ministries um, in order to understand on how to cooperate in this, uh, in this situation. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so it's work in progress, I guess. 
I think we have to move on now to uh, our next speaker is Yadranka and Alan from Croatia who are no yes. now today. Making them and presenter. Italy will make them presenter. So I think Yadranka will be the speaker. Yes, hello to everybody. Hello. Hope you can see. I would I would just uh, inform you very shortly about uh, recent initiatives in Croatia. Uh, Yadranka, we can't see your slide. If you had slides, we can't see. Well, I can't see them, but. Sorry? Yeah. It's okay now. Yeah. That was actually the flyer, which is unfortunately, unfortunately in Croatian language, uh, for our first seminar, uh, somehow a uh, very important seminar because we bring uh, four teams for four projects together to discuss with uh, researchers and uh, uh, about future services. So we started our cooperation uh, at Richard Boschkovic Institute with the uh, uh, EOS uh, Hub uh, team approximately two months ago. Actually, we uh, came to the conclusion that uh, different teams in Croatia are working on different projects and we are not so well connected. So we started to think how we can bring uh, different teams uh, together and uh, primary, primarily to raise awareness related to the importance of the research data uh, and fair principles and we are with the research data we are at the very beginning in Croatia. So actually we wanted to, to see uh, how we can use technologies and infrastructures uh, develop uh, as a part of uh, different projects uh, to offer some common services for researchers and therefore we uh, decided to start uh, this with the seminar for researchers, which was held on 29th of uh, March. And uh, actually four projects were presented at the seminar, EOS Hub uh, and the team uh, from Ruja Boskovic Institute presented their activities. And uh, also, uh, team from uh, Institute of uh, Ethnography and Folklore in Zagreb presented uh, Daria HR project and uh, our colleague uh, Mariana Glavica from the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities presented activities uh, in CESTA and Alan will shortly inform you about, about uh, those activities and at the end uh, uh, we presented uh, open air, advanced, and what we plan in the next three years period. So, and uh, actually, after that, we had a, a quite fruitful discussion uh, with the uh, audience, and all details and presentations uh, at uh, open a blog post. And now Alan will shortly tell you about uh, CESTA. Hi. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, there was one presentation about CESDA ERIC and CESDA ERIC is a consortium or a network of European social science uh, research data archives. Uh, Croatia was participating in two large capacity building projects. Uh, one was FP7 and one was uh, Horizon project. And now we are in phase of testing the pilot infrastructure for research data depositing. Uh, in the sense of the uh, European Open Science Cloud, we are in, we are uh, in the collaboration uh, uh, with our IT experts at Roger Boschkovic Institute. And uh, we are brainstorming and preparing test cases and scenarios for possibility of integrating uh, current data repositories uh, with the cloud infrastructure for online analysis and calculations. So, well, uh, there are many challenges like the security of data, anonymization procedures, harmonization of data, etc. But we are on it. Uh, also, uh, says the says the uh, research 
the data repository network is also a great potential data source for open air. Uh, in the last two years, uh, we have some activities, but we didn't have much success uh, in connecting uh, CESDA with the open air because of some organizational problems in CESDA. But now they beca became uh, an ERIC. Uh, CESDA is re reorganized, and I think that we can raise this issue again of connecting uh, uh, CESDA, CESDA with, with the open air. And I ho hope that uh, CESDA could soon become a great research data provider for for the open air. So that's all about CESDA. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan and Deirdranka. Does anyone have any questions here for them? You are welcome. Thank you. Hi, I can jump in as a uh, NIL representative from Croatia. I actually only first met uh, Jadranka two weeks ago on another Conference. Unfortunately, I was not invited on the on the Dyer one because uh, Croatia in ESCOP has uh, two institution. One is the RBI uh, from where the Yarongo comes, and the other one is uh, Serce. Um, so my, uh, our task is mainly on uh, providing the infrastructure and support for people uh, getting to the infrastructure. Uh, so I don't know after. Finally, meeting the nodes. I uh, kind of hope we're gonna mm -hmm. continue collaborating uh, more closely in the future. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Amir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have to move on uh, now to the EGI representative from from France, Genevieve. Um, Gagli will make you presenter. Okay. Hello. Hello. Um, may I begin? Do you hear me? Yes, please yes, begin. Please. Yes, yes, you can hear me. Okay, so I'm Geneviève Rony, I'm the NIL from France Cri, that is uh, uh, the French NGI, the French research, the French research infrastructure, and also a scientific interest group. Um, here you can see the map of our. Slides. I can't see any slides, I'm sorry, unless it's just me, myself. Um, I'm sorry, I can't see. Can anyone else see Genevieve's slides? No. Okay. I don't know why. Uh, Your voice is very nice, so I'm sure we can. No, but uh, it's it's, it's for a pity. I'm sorry to to see the the slides yeah. because there is a map. Uh, what can I do for that? Let Let me share the slides so you can just. Okay. Presentation and I use my screen. Okay. I hope you can see this view. Okay, this is the first uh, slide. In the second one, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, here you can see the, the map with our sites. Uh, you can see that uh, they are distributed uh, on, on the um, landscape in, in France. We have uh, a grid site. We have a federation of uh, IAAS clouds. We have a catalog of service of this uh, infrastructure uh, with Dirac, Cloud, IROTS, this uh, data management service. Our users come from all disciplines. Uh, we have uh, several hundred national users that are uh, people that work in our laboratories. We welcome about 100 uh, virtual organizations whose uh, 25 are national or local. We have one that is a little bit special because uh, it welcomes all disciplines and it is a long tail oriented and it is uh, very used. We have also a virtual organization for training. Uh, something that I didn't note in the, in the slide is that um, we gather publications from our, our users in a collection that is uh, hosted by uh, HAL uh, in France. HAL is a repository for the French uh, academics. 
Uh, you can change the slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Um, the activities related to, to the NIL uh, are uh, the relationship with user communities, so user support at large, training, we are training users um, for our services and cloud services. We are also uh, offering training for students in their academic courses. Um, that is something that we uh, provide um, for uh, um, the teacher and uh, it's for our students. Um, we also support our users toward international level. That is, we help them uh, to know um, EGI, for example, and uh, in the next months probably EOS. But um, we, we help them in the fact that we uh, pay for their travels to go to international conferences, for example, EGI conferences, the high for air or uh, more um, related to our um, services conferences such as IWAT or DRAC or others. We also support them for project proposals. And, um, Next slide, please. We also organi organize uh, a big uh, scientific event in France almost each year. Um, that is our success days. That are scientific days by users for users. That means that uh, the users can meet uh, other users they can present their success stories, including uh, AGI success stories if they have. And the objective is to foster expertise and experience sharing. We also collaborate in this event with sisters, national e infrastructures and their users. Uh, HTC or HPC or cloud or storage e infrastructure. We webcast of everything in the in the scientific days that are talks, panels, demonstrations, and we publish posters. Uh, this is a French speaking event, so it is more adapted to the, to the French uh, uh, attendees. Uh, this year we will uh, we will uh, organize this event with other infrastructures in front, so that is why we changed the name. It's no more success days, but GCAT, and we are preparing it um, for uh, the autumn. So if the, um, the French NOAD uh, wants to come, he is welcome. Uh, if you have questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Genevieve. Does anybody have questions? Anyone? France, who has any? Uh, good. Okay. Okay. So we move on to Stefan. Uh, the Belgian NGI. Hi. Go uh, ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, hello, I'm Stefan Gerard from Belgium, and today I would like to introduce you our NIL, Belgian NIL activities. Well, first of all, I need to give you a uh, short overview of the Belgian landscape. We have two regional infrastructures in Belgium, uh, the Vlaams Supercomputer Centrum for Flanders and the Consortium of the Equipment de Calcul Intensive for Wallonia. And both these uh, infrastructures have similarities. They are organized as federation of sites managed by universities. They have a high broadband fiber networks 
provided by Net Bennett to link the sites. They have a strong focus on high performance computing and a high level of integration through some common facilities like shared file systems to distribute users' files and data and of software and a centralized management of users' accounts and so on. And then you have Begrid. Uh, Begrid is promoted by BESPO. BESPO is the Belgian Office for uh, Scientific Policy. It's a federal uh, agents, agency. Uh, Begrid has its own uh, infrastructure delivering grid and cloud resources as well as support. Um, so the Belgian uh, NGI liaisons, goals and activities. Uh, the, my colleague Olivier de Vrode is not uh, attending today, um, but is my the second uh, deal for Belgium. Our goals is to build bridges between Belgian projects, infrastructures and EGI, to promote grid and cloud computing and to increase the visibility of Bay Grid. Uh, promote grid and cloud computing is, is still uh, necessary for uh, researchers outside of physics. And our current activities, we are now working on a new uh, Bay Grid website. Uh, we are also constantly updating the Bay Grid uh, wiki that contains mainly technical uh, documentation for end users. We are now writing new training material uh, about grid computing. And with this new uh, training material, we will soon organize uh, a hands-on and at the end of this year, it will be uh, an introduction to grid computing. And also we plan some meetings with people from University of Ghent, who is a member of the VSC, uh, uh, because they are building a new uh, tier one level uh, cloud system. And there are some opportunities to join uh, the Fed Cloud um, in a lightweight uh, way. Uh, look, our collaboration with the Belgian NOADS, well, actually, we are constantly seeking to reach out new users, especially from uh, other disciplines and physics. And in this context, it's very important for us to increase the collaboration with NOADS that would, that would help us to find new users. Um, and we would like also to understand how we can start collaborating with uh, the NOAD colleagues. And soon we will contact them uh, to see how we can start collaborating. And that's all from our side. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you. I think we have a, our Belgian colleague in the meeting here today. So maybe you can, after this, be in touch. Emily is here, I think from OpenAir, who is also the NOAD. Um, so does anybody have any questions? No, okay. So that gave you a flavor, I hope, of what both OpenAir does and what the uh, NGIs do at national level. I hope that was a useful overview. Um, sorry we couldn't have all of you, uh, but thank you very much for those who, who did um, present. So we have a few minutes left for a very quick overview of RDA Europe, which also fits into this context quite nicely. So I'll hand over to my colleague Daniel and Sarah Jones from the DCC. Thanks, Nadja. My name is Daniel Bangert from the University of Göttingen. Um, we're joining this meetup just to give you an idea of what's happening in RDA at the moment. So in brief, the Research Data Alliance is a community-driven organization whose mission is to build the social and technical bridges that enable open sharing of data. RDA Europe has recently entered a new phase with the RDA Europe 4 project launching last month in March 2018. And a key objective of this project is to facilitate the work of RDA through a network of nodes across Europe. On the map, you can see um, the nine current nodes uh, in Finland, Germany, Italy, Greece, Iberia, France, the ne Netherlands, uh, the UK, and Ireland. So what does an RDA node do? They support data-related activities at the national, local, and regional level. 
They act as a central contact point between data practitioners and RDA in general. They promote the RDA vision and results through events, collaborative workshops, and so on. They develop concrete actions to facil facilitate the uptake and adoption of standards and outputs. They interact with national research funding bodies and other stakeholders, and they participate in RDA processes, including RDA Europe governance. And just as an example, here are some activities that um, the RDA node in the Netherlands has planned. The node there is DANS, and you can see there's, there's almost uh, 300 RDA members in the country already, and some involvement in working and interest group uh, co-chairs. So they're planning to engage with government, national funding bodies, research organizations, and other networks. They're holding collaborative workshops on specific issues that are important to their national agendas, like certification and pers persistent ident identifiers. And due to their background, they're li liaising with specific communities around social sciences and humanities. They're also disseminating RDA activities and outputs in Dutch via journal publications and other channels. And I'll pass over to my colleague, Sarah Jones, who will talk about our plans for growing the network. Thank you very much, Daniel. So we already have um, a series of nodes, um, but we're also growing that network. And we have a cascading grant available over the next three years of the project. We're going to have three waves of grants um, where we bring on new nodes in different countries. Um, so we have three um, that we're hoping to bring on this year. We'll be releasing a call um, shortly in the next month or so, seven in 2019 and, and an additional three in 2020. And they will be fulfilling the same um, remit as the nodes that Daniel's already described. And what we'll be doing is working with our existing nodes to, to develop some guidelines on how to establish and, and run your node. And really the reason why we asked to, to join the webinar today is because we see um, a big overlap between the open air NOADs and the RDA nodes. And I'm just trying to advance this slide. I realize I can't advance it. If you can advance, please, Daniel. There we go. Um, so we see a, a lot of opportunities for collaboration between Open Air and RDA and the NGI international liaisons. Um, and what we'd hope to do, maybe you have reflections in this final minute about what those intersections are and what the opportunities are to collaborate, because we'd like to work with you more. OK, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Sarah and Daniel. That was great. Speedy, but comprehensible. Thank you. Um, Okay, we're we're entering the last minute of our of our meetup. Um, maybe Gegli, you could just make me present uh, have one last slide. And um, does anybody have any questions at this stage? Have you found it useful? <laughs> Write any reflections in the chat. Um, maybe we hold another one. Um, in terms of next steps. I think now we've got these three different national activities happening and maybe more in the field um, go fair as well. So I know from the NOAA's perspective, you have your work national workshops. If you could then reach out to whoever your parts are level, um, perhaps get them to participate in the workshop or dialogue when you're planning it at least uh, identify who they are and start dialogues. Um, we could have another one of these um, forums to communicate and swap ideas, maybe elaborate more on, uh, today was really just a chance to introduce each other. Let Gergli and I know if you have any more ideas. Um, we also have the forum of DI4R in October in Lisbon, which has just been announced. We could have a session to to develop these ideas further if some of you are attending. Um, those were really a few reflections on what, what we could do next, but we will keep working on it. We have this collaboration agreement and um, we'll be doing more together in terms of training and support. And Tiziana wrote, it would be good to have a national infrastructure focus at DI4R. Yeah, okay. 
So, and just lastly, I'd like to promote the next uh, joint webinar, um, How to Manage Your Data and Make Them Open and Fair, uh, run by DANS on the 15th of May. You can register via our portal and via the EOS Hub portal as well. That's at one o'clock on the 15th of May. Um, that's be quite a hands-on webinar. So that's another, the second of the webinars in this collaboration. And we will come up with more webinars and support and training as time goes on. Um, I know we're out of time. This, um, happy to stay on and take a couple more questions and ideas if uh, anyone wants to um, raise anything now. But for those who have to go, thank you very much indeed for attending and for our presenters and for making them very slick, short presentations. That was excellent. And I think Tiziana is writing um, things. And Emma, Emma is introducing herself. Helpful if you could share a list of contacts for each initiative in one file. Yeah, I think one of us has already started something like that. A mapping. Marianne is promoting her webinar. Okay. Anything while we're still here? Anybody like to say anything? Gergely, anything from your end? I, I suggest that with my lab, we will compile a single document or email that we will circulate to the NIRS and the NOADS with the pointers to the contact points in each country and also uh, suggesting next steps to get in touch and um, send us further information about your national events so we can support you in organizing. And do keep us informed if, if you have meetings with your national peers and if something concrete comes up from those meetings, we definitely are interested to hear about this. So we can pull these success stories together, maybe into this di for art session that was raised by Naila. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gedley. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good afternoon. And um, until the next time we meet. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.